everyone, welcome to another video. If you're new here, my name is Irit. I am a watercolor and mixed media artist based in Austria, in Europe. And on my channel, I share all of my watercolor and mixed media adventures. So in today's video, I just want to share with you a few paintings that I painted in an art course I took in Vienna last week. Now, I am uh, going through and editing the daily footage that I made and hopefully I can kind of show you a bit more of the process and how this painting and a few more came together. Uh, but I just need to work on that. So in the meantime, I thought I could show you what I made and kind of talk a little bit about it. But you can see more of the process and kind of the space where we worked at or in and a little bit of the art store in Vienna. Uh, so all that is coming in the vlog, uh, probably closer to the end of the week. And yeah, today I just want to talk about my paintings and yeah, just show them to you. Before I get into that, I just want to give you an update on my stamps. Thank you to everyone that has reached out and told me that they were interested. I have ordered another restock and usually from the time I place the order till the stamps are actually available for purchase, uh, I would say it's probably around two to three weeks. So make sure you are subscribed to my channel, but most importantly, subscribe to my newsletter. The link is below. I never spam. I only send out emails when there are like things actually happening. I will send out a notice as soon as they are back in stock and you can head on over there and buy them. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much to everyone. Um, I'm so glad you enjoy the stamps and uh, yeah, so let's start talking. This is actually a good representation of what we learned in the course. And again, in the vlog, um, you can see how things came together. And I think I filmed almost every day, like all of my paintings, so you can get more of an idea. But uh, so today I just want to talk about the finished piece, what I like, what I don't like. And yeah, so this was probably my one of my instructor's favorite paintings of mine because it doesn't have my color scheme. <laughs> so I think I was the only one in the class that used, you know, pink, purple, um, like fluorescent red. Uh, everyone else used a lot of uh, earth tones and, you know, just like calmer, like more natural colors. And I have to say that the pieces that people made were really, really incredible, which I think is a, also a testament to how good the course was and the instructor. Um, there are a lot of pieces there I would happily hang in my house and I was the only kind of like full-time artist. I don't know why I'm doing that. <laughs> I'm Joey. <laughs> um, everyone else painting is like their hobby and yeah, so there were some good paintings. Anyway, this one, I do like it. I really like uh, all the texture uh, and the color scheme. I think the composition is great. I think there's, you know, enough contrast here with the darker areas and the lighter areas. It's just interesting to look at. Uh, from afar, you probably can't see, but there's a lot of texture here. And this one actually has one of the cool <laughs> techniques that were kind of like the theme of the class, which is uh, fire paintings. So we burned <laughs> our paintings. <laughs> so that that was fun. I think everyone is a little bit mesmerized with fire, you know, to varying degrees. And um, yeah, so we added some fire and kind of burned it. But I think the most beautiful part of it, uh, the material we used is called shellac. And then you also add some like fuel <laughs> on top of it and then you light it on fire. Now, the shellac by nature, it has like, as you can see, like this orangey color, which does nothing for me. However, 
if you kind of control the fire in a certain way, which is not easy, um, you get like more of this color, like here, like this lighter, um, it's almost like a sandy, beigey color. And it just creates this beautiful texture. And on top of the turquoise, I found it especially appealing. And so that was the effect that I was uh, going for here. You can see that here. And I, I really like how it turned out. Uh, that picture was already hanging in my husband's man cave. It's a little bit sad because the lighting situation there is not that great, but since I'm less attached to this piece, I'm okay with it. But it was, all of them were a lot of fun to make. And uh, yeah, again, you'll hear more about the process in the the vlog coming up. So I just, let's, let's focus on the finished painting. Um, yeah, so I did three canvases that were 50 by 50 centimeters and then three that were 60 by 60 centimeters. Uh, that's what I worked on this week. At some points I felt like I wish I had another couple of canvases, but I think all in all it was a good number of pieces uh, so that it wasn't overwhelming. And I think, I feel like probably I'm done with all six of them, but I also had, you know, enough painting so I could stop if I didn't know where I want to go next with a certain painting, I could stop and move on to something else. So there was most of the time something to do, but not too many paintings that it was kind of overwhelming or I felt I had to rush it. I actually probably had, I could probably fit another canvas comfortably into this uh, work cycle. So just to give you an idea on how many paintings I worked, let's move on to the next painting. Okay, the second painting I wanna show you, as you can see, the colors are still <laughs> not exactly my color palette. I mean, I appreciate it and I like it, it's, it's on the border of maybe a little bit too much yucky, yellowy brown here, but uh, I still like it. I think what speaks to me most about these paintings, you know, if the color story is not exactly my color aesthetics, is the texture, the movement, and yeah, the texture is really great. Yeah, what I like about this painting is that similarly to the other one, I feel like there's um, kind of a dynamic strong composition and there's nice contrast you have the darker areas here and then a bit I feel like the weather <laughs> forecast people we have a cold front coming here so <laughs> these areas are just cleaner and yeah which is important I mean I like it and there were some amazing paintings like people made like really huge canvas not huge but like really big canvases and then they had areas that were very, very quiet, which I really enjoy. I enjoy those aesthetics. It's not something that I find easy to do. I'm usually more on the, you know, more color, more, 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 but uh, I can definitely appreciate that, especially when you kind of make a big painting, I feel like as a part of your home interior or home decor, Especially, you know, I think most of us, we don't have huge homes. And then sometimes if you make a huge painting in a, you know, just like a regular living room, it's nice when it's not too crazy busy. This is painting number two. Now we'll start to get more into my color story. So I just want to show you a bit the texture. Moving on. So this is painting number three. As you can see, totally different. I always look at my painting adventures as an opportunity to experiment. And if a painting is not successful or that I don't like the finished look, I just see it as a learning experience and I take what I like uh, on to the next adventure. So what I like about this one, this one started completely different from the other ones and it just started after I created the base layers of texture, I just covered it with this glorious ultramarine blue. I don't know, just wanted to see uh, what would happen 
And after that it became kind of more challenging to find a color story that I liked. And I am happy with it. I particularly like certain areas of it where you can see a little bit of this. We used uh, um, material that creates this kind of like, it's like a crackle paste. It cracks when it dries. And I'm not a fan of a lot of dimension on my paintings. Again, even though I was surprised, I saw some people make things that at the beginning I was like, that is so, so, so not me. And then when everything was finished with the colors and the layers and everything, I was like, yeah, I could see myself hanging this in my home. So I reserve the right to change my mind. But for me personally, I like texture, not so much dimension. But uh, the effects of this like crackle paste and colored in this luminous blue, I really, really like that. And I'm considering uh, finishing this painting with something that is glossy, so like a glossy varnish, uh, just because I think it would look really, really special. But yeah, my love for ultramarine blue was just intensified this week. And also I need to hunt down. Uh, one of the other students had a pigment. We used pigments, which is fantastic. And I'll probably talk about that in the vlog, but um, like we mixed our own paint using pigments. And one of the students had this glorious pigment, which it looked just like ultramarine mixed with white. So kind of that lavender cornflower blue that was just glorious. Also in the paintings, it was beautiful. And I really hope I can find something like that uh, because I really, really loved it. So yeah, this started as just like blue, 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 blue. And then I added some of my colors. You can see that pop of pink, a happy orangey yellow, a little bit of turquoise and some white to, I don't know, I guess let the other colors pop. Uh, so I like this one. I think it has a certain mood to it that uh, I enjoy. Um, it's not my favorite we'll get to my favorite. But this one was really fun to make. It was probably the one I spent the least amount of time on because it was just so different from the other ones and I wasn't sure, you know, where I was going and what I like. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I just wanna show you again, like these areas, these make me super, super happy. So just that crackle with that intense blue, that's good stuff. Okay, moving on to painting number four. Number four. Uh, this one was probably my problem child <laughs> of this week. <laughs> it demanded the most attention. And yeah, again, I wasn't really sure where I was going here. Uh, it started again with a bit, a lot, a bit of a lot of like this ultramarine blue at the top. And then I made like, I added this dark blue with the, you know, splatters. Basically anything that reminded me of watercolors, I was like, yes, I feel at home. This is familiar. I love this. Uh, but the good thing was that a lot of the techniques that uh, the instructor used uh, involved a lot of water and a lot of like texture, you know, kind of reminding me a lot of using granulating colors and also a lot of it is because the paint is so watered down a lot of it is very very matte and flat and doesn't have that um like plasticky you know somewhat gloss like half glossy uh plasticky look that acrylics can have so speaking of, of that I did add, uh, I just wanted to cover s stuff up. So I did add a thick layer of um, white paint like that I didn't mix myself at the top here. And I kind of lived to regret it because, um, you know, acrylic paint is, is like plastic. It just resists watery things that you put on top of it. And then I kind of had to fight with it um, during the next steps. But at some point, um, I just got this, told me I am a landscape, like some hilly landscape, and that made me want to add some green that you can see here. 
And then the top is some sort of sunset skies with a touch of neon red because why not? So that's this pop here. So I think all in all, I think it kind of works. Yeah, again, the texture is beautiful and I'll show you some close-ups. Um, but yeah, this one gave me trouble. I had troubles here. I don't know what more to say about it. I like it. I think I like it and I think it will look much uh, better and kind of more finished and polished in a nice frame. So I'll be on the lookout for a nice frame for it. I think what I enjoy about painting on a canvas is that I don't have to frame it in glass like I have to with watercolors or don't have to but prefer to and I think I'm going to try to find one of these frames I see everywhere that are just like a wooden frame around it and the, the painting kind of just floats a couple of millimeter within that frame so I'm going to look for something like that I think it would uh, really uh, elevate the total effect of this painting so I'll show you a bit the texture these are like my favorite parts of the painting you can see where everything is like running down and because we mix the paint ourselves you can see you have these like yeah basically a granulating look look at that really really like that this is just like a fluorescent color it doesn't read exactly like that on camera but trust me when i say that it is so Painting number four. Painting number five, the penultimate one. The last one is my favorite, so I'm keeping it uh, to the end. <laughs> okay, so this one was my cobalt violet painting. I had to have a cobalt violet painting, and it was fun. It was a little bit challenging to kind of see what happens to it. There was a lot of cobalt violet here. And then I just started adding some black and then I think on the last day or the the one before the last day I just started adding all these like warmer uh, tones and I'm happy with it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of one of the kind of themes that people painted uh, were uh, volcano eruptions and I'm more of an abstract painter so I didn't really uh, want to explore that, but I guess being surrounded by, by all those volcanoes, it kind of made me think of a volcano. Like I could imagine this mountain here and then you have like the fire coming out. This was fun to make. I think at some point I just didn't feel super attached to it. So I kind of just played around with the colors but because there's still quite a bit of white space, it's not completely white, I'll show you uh, closer up. Uh, I don't think it reads too crazy or too busy. Uh, the color story is not exactly like in my happy place, but I still can appreciate it and enjoy it. And I'll show you some close-ups. So you can see like all that cobalt violet, that was more the initial layers. And then I just added more and in the bottom there you can see there are like lighter washes of color so there's still color but it's much more subtle and here we have our burning sky let's say and again that beautiful texture that really makes everything so so interesting and a bit of black for contrast always fun Okay, now for the last one. Now I feel <laughs> in harmony <laughs> with my space. <laughs> so this one is my favorite. I think it was kind of the easiest one and which doesn't make me appreciate it less. I think this was just, you know, this is me in this medium with these techniques. Uh, I felt, yeah, that, that's how I feel about it. So again, I'll show you close-ups because I think it's the same thing with my watercolor paintings, the way that I feel about them. You get a lot more if you kind of come close to the paintings and you can see uh, all the little details. Uh, it's just much more interesting sometimes than looking, 
looking at it from afar so I'll show you some of those close-ups but yeah as you can see it's just my colors I started with kind of a pale uh, peachy background then added some you know strong pops of at the beginning it was just the, the yellow and the pink and then I decided also to add here a little bit of that turquoise which I think they look great together the yellow and the turquoise and yeah this was just a joy to make feels like me probably will hang it in my room because it's just so me <laughs> so it kind of fits <laughs> with the rest of the color scheme here uh, but I think I still want to look for a nice frame this one is a 60 by 60 centimeters still want to find a nice frame and this painting I also wouldn't mind um, creating a similar version bigger but uh, maybe one meter on one meter but I do want to find a nice uh, probably like a natural wood frame for this uh, I think it would make it, again, look a bit more polished. Here's a little close-up at all that texture. I mean, I hope you can see what I mean when I say you get so much more when you get closer to the painting, right? So interesting. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know if you are more into watercolors, more into acrylics. How do you feel about it? I have very, I'm very ambivalent about acrylics and yeah, but this week was a lot of fun and definitely made me want to do more with these techniques that I learned. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will stick around for the vlog coming later this week. I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.